Today's New Testament reading is from Romans, the 7th and 8th chapters. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Jeremiah Johnson. By the time we get to Romans 7 and 8, we've come a long way with Paul. He began his letter by holding up the mirror of the law and forcing us to look into the depths of our own sin. It doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, if you've got the Bible memorized or you've never even cracked it open. When we're held up to the standard of God's perfect law, we're all spectacular failures. And all the excuses and the bargains and the rationalizing won't do us any good. We are on the wrong side of God. Or as Paul puts it, no one is righteous. No, not even one. But in the face of this damning evidence, God pulls out the most unexpected surprise out of his bag of divine tricks turns out that he has another way for us to be right with him, one that isn't based on us doing all the thou shalts and thou shalt nots. This completely different way of being right with God is by the work of Jesus. Romans 3. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. 
In other words, by sacrificing himself on the cross, Jesus did what we could not do. He made things right between us and God again. And yet all this is very hard to believe, simply because we still look like sinners. This is the paradox that all of us face as Christians. God tells us that we're righteous, but we keep on doing all sorts of unrighteous things. Or as Paul puts it in chapter 7, For I do not do the good I want, but the evil that I do not want is what I keep on doing. This calls into question our whole identity as Christians. If I'm really a believer, how come I keep backsliding into sin? Shouldn't I be making progress? Can I really call myself a Christian if I keep on doing what I hate? It's a crisis of identity. You're probably familiar with uh, Robert Louis Stevenson's short novel, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It tells the story of two very different men, Dr. Henry Jekyll, a kind and morally upright doctor, and the evil Mr. Edward Hyde, a dark character who would probably sell his own mother if he had the chance. As you probably know, the twist in the story is that we find out Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are actually the same person. You know, and Paul describes us in much the same way. It's almost like we have two different personalities in the same being. You know, one that wants to do the good that God desires, and the other one wants to keep on doing the evil that we hate. Or as we Lutherans have dubbed it, saint and sinner. And so the pressing question is, which one is the real me? Am I Mr. Hyde? Or am I Dr. Jekyll? Am I really the sinner? Or am I really the saint? But Paul's answer is plain and straightforward. You are the saint. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Your life is lived in the spirit the Holy Spirit, and this new life in the Spirit is the real you. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that the sinner will simply go away as much as we'd like it. Our old sinful flesh clings to us as long as we are alive in this age. But this does mean that your sin cannot kill you anymore. It's true. You should be condemned with the rest of the world, But now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In God's courtroom, you were going to get a death sentence because you were a slave to sin. But Jesus showed up at your trial. He stood in your defense. He became the sinner. And you became the saint. He rescued you from this body of death by dying in his own body. And now you are free. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.